Listener discretion is advised. This show is for a mature audience. Strong language and controversial topics will be featured. Please do not try to recreate or attempt our bad decisions. Create your own. What You Shouldn't Do with Em and Joe, a podcast about all the things we were told we shouldn't do, but did anyways. Hello, everyone. Em and Joe talk. (laughs) Episode tres. Tres. You shouldn't get so political is the title. Ooh. Yes. So, um, I think we both have been told multiple times before not to talk politics. And I've even been told that I'm dangerous for talking about politics when I'm giving my Lyft and Uber rides, even if someone else brings it up. Someone told me that I was living on the edge, so to speak, by just talking about things that impact me and my children's lives. (laughs) <laughs> if that so sounds dangerous. crazy to you that's what it sounds like when you tell people not to talk politics because here in the south you know everybody just likes to sugarcoat things and protect their kids from the truth yes so we are going to highlight two different people in this episode that impact our everyday life here in alabama and they're on different levels of government i would say and they're a little bit um, different in how they see things. Mm -hmm. We have our own specific categories that we've put them in, but um, we're gonna let you decide what category you wanna put people in, or if you wanna categorize them at all, they can just understand that they're people and they're multidimensional human beings that may or may not do something you want them to do. So first, do you wanna introduce our first person, because we both know this person. Oh yeah, Devin Keith. Mutually, Devin Keith. And he is our city councilman for Huntsville um, City. And when you say city councilman, I'm not gonna lie, I wasn't really that interested in what the city council did until they started talking about construction, like in our neighborhood and for the roads and my tires are getting popped, so I started caring. And um, I'm really glad that I started caring about local elections and local folks because Devin Keith is a phenomenal, a phenomenal young man that has a very interesting background. And I actually um, accidentally talked with his mom without knowing him and knowing her and knowing their connection. But I have met them both on separate occasions and I like them both. They're both awesome folks. So we have been to wa- talks before and... I think it's important that we um, talk about his background. And Devin is born and raised Huntsville, Alabama. Woo woo. And yeah. went to Sparkman, right? Yeah. And he um, knows a lot of folks. That comes back, guys. Listen, listen carefully. Sparkman comes back. And I'm not going to make another connection because <laughs> I know Sparkman a little too well, if you know what I mean. So he. Um, he got hired um, last year. He got he won the election. Well, 2016, wasn't it? Not yeah, 2016 last year. And I remember seeing his signs and seeing what he was. Um, pl- his platform was based off of, and I thought it was a really good idea. And that District One needed that kind of renovation. His plan was to have the three C's, and I, I didn't realize this was his platform until C's. I looked it up, guys. I know him personally, but I never heard the three C's. Change, complexity, and competition. Mm. And that's very true, because there's a lot of change in this area. He also did um, the three R's that he sees as a, as a solution, to reform, revitalize, and replicate. Mm-hmm. Replicate other cities that have been successful, which I totally agree with, and I think every time we went to his meetings, We talk about what we see in Nashville. Yeah. Because we kind of have our feet in both doors in Nashville and in northern Alabama. And they're just trying to expand on Huntsville anyways. So it's good to see a a city that people usually travel to to see something different. Yeah. Um, And they usually travel from Huntsville to get to Nashville. So why can't we have our own kind of Nashville-Huntsville mixture here? Yeah. Yeah. And we're all known for something a little different. So it's kind of cool we don't have a competition with them. Exactly. Um, Additionally... um, 
back to <laughs> that we're kind of talking about our sp- perspective of uh, the p- politics, but back to Devin Keith's position, he also has made a tech TED talk, and he talked about o- holding open the door to the next generation, which rings really close to our hearts. Um, he has his slogan as "It's time to get to work," and I would definitely true <laughs> agree with that at this point. And he did his undergrad in Samford University, and then he went to the McCormick Graduate School of Policy and Global Studies in Boston, Massachusetts. So he definitely is primed and ready to be making some major changes and to put the work in. He he told us, frankly, <laughs> he feels like he's already a grown man, like an old man. Yeah. Because of the stress. And I said, I understand, you know, that's that's the price you have to pay about caring about your fellow people. And um, the pressure's just on him anyways. Yeah, he has a lot of pressure. Yeah, especially oh, with all uh, the years of politics politicians yeah. before him that yeah. have lied to the people so now mm-hmm. everybody's kind of on edge Bitter. and you know can't trust just everybody so he's having to prove himself a little bit more mm-hmm. and he's young exactly and people want to doubt doubt us young folks i but i we believe know things we have that third mm-hmm. eye it's open we're, we're gonna have to prove it to ourselves too we're gonna have to be on ourselves and push ourselves to the max um so it's interesting his his background being from sparkman he actually knew a baseball player at sparkman that won uh, that got a i think a college scholarship for baseball he did really good Mm -hmm. he was the top of the class and he ended up going to um the athletic to the oakland a's in California. I believe, yes. Oakland A's, sorry. I'm from California. I know the Oakland A's. I just knew the farm team, and they were the Modesto A's. So I think of the old school, right. lower level. But he um, came to visit Devin. He came to visit Devin, and his name is Bruce Maxwell. And he um, had an incident with the waiter, and they never named names. Bruce and Devin both went to this, well, to lunch at, at this place, at this establishment that sold alcohol. And when they ID'd him... There was a two. There's two different stories. So there's the story that Bruce Maxwell and Devin Keith have, which is he's looked at their idea ID and said, "Oh, you're the guy that took a knee recently." So backtrack a little. The the weekend before, Bruce Maxwell did took a knee on the field during the national anthem, and um, that was on. It wasn't too long ago. Starting on September 23rd. Yeah. So he identified this waiter as a person that said something about that incident and and said something negative about it. And then also talked about being a Trump supporter. And they felt really uncomfortable. They felt like he was going to profile them and do something. Who knows, you know. But they didn't feel comfortable, so they asked the management to take care of it and get a different waiter without causing any disruption. Well, that got dealt with. The story came out. I don't know how it came out, and we still don't really know because it's happened since we talked to Devin last. And um, he ends up becoming a he said, she said story. And the waiter names the their self and the restaurant named themselves. Even though Devin tried to keep it on the DL, he was like, no, I'm not going to name them because that's messed up. Exactly. And I totally agreed with that decision. That was like super high road for him and then they name themselves they're like well it was maggie's pub and i'm like you're so stupid you just opened like shut up stay away from the controversy but they were backing up the guy now i've talked to a lot of people since then and it's been reported that there's a lot of racist people that work there and other things so that's just from he said she said i'm not saying that's definite approval of what and there's some good people that work there too. It's just yeah. kind of a mixture, and you just honestly living here in Alabama, you never know what you're gonna get. Exactly, that's the whole point. Is that these things still happen, and that was their narrative as they were trying to point out, hey, even though I come back to Huntsville, I'm still dealing with this overt conservative and yeah frame of mind and I'm just tired of it so at the same time everyone's fighting about if this was a really story they're overlooking the fact that this is still possibly happening you know exactly and just ignoring the people that are trying to report it so I'm tired of it so we're going to represent um additionally um 
we had an interview with him. This was before this incident happened. We had an interview, what, like two weeks before this all blew up? Three weeks, maybe? Pretty much, yeah. It was before was, Trump came to town. Yeah, it was before Trump came to Huntsville. That's a whole nother episode. Mm-hmm. Um, that'll be that'll be episode four, guys. Yes, and um, please keep attuned for that. We were like, we were in a sea of craziness in that building. You don't even understand. Um, so in our interview with Devin, though, we talked about uh, various topics, um, and we ended up having some funny moments where Giovanni had to prove her her millennialness and the fact that she still remembers dial up. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't realize that was like a level of knowledge that you like you had to prove you know like I still remember dial up y'all like it's a lot of <laughs> believe it or not like, I know a lot of adults will say oh you're not young enough or you're not old enough to remember this that funny. and then we have to do stuff to prove ourselves as young people and they're like that funny uh, yeah totally was there it really wasn't that long ago <laughs> Like VHS, like people remembering VHS and people yeah. remembering other old things. Exactly. Um, but then we had also moments of where Devin talked about some really interesting concepts that I never really considered. Being someone that is not from Alabama and no, I, my family is not from here. We didn't grow up here. We don't have generations of folks here. So really, I'm fresh from California into this little area and he talked about how people in the 40s and the 50s didn't just have the ability to move away when things got bad here uh he said there's an issue with a term called upper mobility and thinking about it like to this day i still have that ability to think "Hmm, i'm just gonna move away because i because it's just easier anywhere exactly it's just easier to leave a place that you don't particularly care for or you're just ready to start over fresh and you feel like you can't just move into another house and start over fresh in the same city you have to go somewhere else and it's a little hard doing that here because we get so we get a lot of shit just being in alabama yeah but the name should change soon the the name that we get which is the you know racist redneck red state hopefully Hopefully. Hopefully. So that that goes into, um, you know, people realizing where they need to realize, you know, maybe I'm getting the short end of the stick. It's interesting because one uh, Devin's friend that was at the brunch talked about how he didn't know he was poor, didn't even realize that because he had this frame of reference that he just isn't affected by these social issues and that's crazy because i think i didn't realize until my mom literally talked over about finances with us and i'm like oh my god like we won't have enough money to like pay for everything she's like no like we need we need to figure out where we're gonna get food this next month you know exactly and a phrase that my grandmother would say is pinching a penny Mm -hmm. to get a dollar out of it Mm -hmm. just real reallocating those funds and trying to (laughs) And getting credit, having to borrow. Mm-hmm. That's what a lot of poor people face in middle class, having mm-hmm. to borrow the money that they need. Mm-hmm. So part of our other side of this, you shouldn't get put so political, is our representative, uh, Mo Brooks. Oh, yeah. He is our House of Representatives representative. So I should maybe write a little drawing and you can put this up here. But just in case y'all are, like, behind on how this works, we have the House of Representatives, and then we have the Senate, and then we have the President, and when we write a bill, we first give it to the House of Representatives, and I'm going to put it up in the video just in case y'all need some edumacation. It goes first to the House of Representatives, and they vote on it, and there's, like, over 200 people, 270, I think, and um, I did the math, I don't know, they change all the time because of districts, they vote on it, yes or no, and if it passes them, it goes on to the Senate, and then if it passes the Senate, and it goes on to the President, and he signs it, something becomes a bill, just like the healthcare stuff, and 
um, all these things that we're talking about repealing or passing, you know, it, it makes a big difference. So where I'm talking is, is this House of Representatives person is a huge impact in for our community and a huge part of our representation in the first part of making a law. So it's important that they at least hear you out. Mo Brooks has not had a public town hall for two years. Yep. He and then when a- he has one. He He had a a SWAT team with him. Well, he had one previous to this, and we will include information on the social media account about how to get a hold of this Facebook Live video. But one of our peers went into one of his town halls. It was a tea party town hall, which is not allowed in a church, by the way, because that is partisan. Mm -hmm. And I still need to find the church that they did it at because we need to publicize that. And he closed down the meeting as soon as he realized there was people that weren't Tea Party, which is partisan. <laughs> it's like literally talking to only the people that support you. What's the whole point? Exactly. Like, duh, they're going to support you. They paid for you to get into office. But um, he never had a public one. So finally, we went to a public one. And it was very eye-opening. He talked about the deficit and our our debt as a country and talked mm-hmm. a lot about numbers for like an hour yeah it was just mostly statistics at first nothing really emotional do you remember blah. like the teacher on stuff SpongeBob? we could look up online ma, ma, ma. <laughs> exactly i can make my lips really <laughs> really but it wasn't <laughs> i don't know it wasn't anything that we couldn't find on the no. internet it was research ourselves. It was to me disrespectful to pers- uh, to a person that could literally Google this. I know we have a lot of debt. I know that we have a lot of deficit issues, and we have a lot of spending and and allocating funds and reallocating funds to the right area. And that's why I made sure to ask my questions. Um, actually, they weren't questions at that point. I had questions, <laughs> and then everyone else asked the same questions, and he didn't give a real answer. So every time I got pissed off, they were so off. neutral and on the borderline. They were so, uh, and he didn't even answer the question. He wouldn't answer. He just talked. So um, when we went to the town hall, I sat there, sat there, listened to all these people ask the same questions about health care, about women's rights, about the economy, our our, the amount of money. Yeah, the Dreamers, the DACA Act, all these different things. Oh, yeah, and also insurance, health insurance, insurance. how the money is going to be allocated. We had people that were directly affected to uh, by the Medicaid block grants, like just... We had everything you've ever needed for him to really hear his constituents out. And then I waited to be last. And at that point, I didn't have questions. I needed to tell him something. Mm-hmm. And he needed to hear it from me. And he wasn't going to interrupt me. I listened to his on um, on the phone town halls before. And he would cut off the women that were trying to tell him something that was really dire. Usually about health care. Usually about, you know, funding for all Americans as a part of our constitutional right for, you know, liberty, life, and pursuit of happiness. And he would just cut them off over and over again, so I didn't let him. And it's kind will, of a disease at this point. Like, yeah. And men that feel like they're above other people and have this kind of power. And it is a problem because I've had guys get upset with me. I'm very... ADD, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm just always thinking, thinking, thinking. And I'm not, I don't consider it rude or disrespectful if someone interrupts me. And it's like a really cool idea. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah. I understand that it relates to what I'm saying. But if I do it to them, I don't consider it rude either. This, exactly. Yeah, this guy that I worked out with, he would do it to me all the time. Oh, I think we should do this song. And I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. And then when I would go back to him and I interrupt him, like someone was new to the group, and they were like, oh, what do we do first? I said, oh, first we get on the map. Da, 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 da. And he was about to say it. I just said it first because I was super caffeinated and awake that morning. <laughs> and he like got mad. And he was like, uh, interrupt me much. And I said, absolutely nothing. I just looked at him. I said, too bad. I can just think that but faster in the morning. <laughs> I didn't say sorry. I just looked straight at him. And I was like, mm, I look, I think too, too fast. Sorry. Exactly. But when it comes to like, I guess, opinions that need to be circulated around in a, um, a town hall meeting. He needs to do more listening than talking. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So he also had his meeting at a place that was hard to find. 
Um, Joe almost didn't make it. Yeah, because <laughs> so Grissom got a new school, right? And so its new location hasn't really been inputted into, you know, Google Maps oh, and yeah. Apple Maps and stuff and even um, uh, Waze apps. So it's just like when I <laughs> when I thought it was there, it definitely wasn't at the old Grissom. And at, the, at that point, too, uh, I was thinking about the exact location, which wasn't in the middle of town. So each end of the town couldn't come to this meeting. It was more or less um, directed towards South Parkway, where there's a lot of old money and white people and white people. <laughs> and it was closer to Lacey Springs, which mm -hmm. if you've been to Huntsville, more white people. Exactly. Then, you know, you have to have some money to live out there because it's really hard to get to town and stuff. And he only knows how to talk to the people that he thinks are just like him. Which exactly. are white people. Um, and he also had SWAT team there at, on retainer, which I thought was really interesting. And he was talking about expenses and talking about mm -hmm. cutting costs and how we need to be careful, mindful of things that we do. And I'm and like, he's got mm -hmm. a fucking SWAT team. Hold up, wait a minute. You have SWAT team on retainer, unless they're doing this out of the goodness of their own heart, which I really don't believe so, because my dad used to get paid for all the events, even if he didn't have to do anything. He always got paid over time i should have asked this well i asked everyone else they said they got overtime for it and um i just he had swat team there so i googled it and i got two different instances of, of numbers related to the swat team costs and in austin texas they have averaged it costs about 15 15 to 100 to 2500 an hour for the swat team to be available and then in uh, Kennewick, Washington, they've also averaged that each operation costs about twelve thousand dollars. So yeah. even if we're like nice and we just say they just charge a retainer fee of a couple thousand dollars, like still that's a couple thousand dollars he literally wasted. He had other cops there that were perfectly able to protect him, and he this is under the pretense that we're dangerous people. That he has to represent, you know, like we're caged animals and he has to be careful when he's around us. Because God forbid a teacher who never has owned a firearm is going to tell you the truth. <laughs> and even people that uh, work in healthcare fields were there. Yeah. Just normal. <laughs> most people had security people. clearances because most people were on that arsenal and most people have security clearances. So it was just the most ridiculous notion I've ever heard of. So that's the numbers related to it. So even if we were nice, he spent $5,000 that he didn't need to spend that night, literally, with his stupid protection. Um, and then we ended up actually meeting someone that gave me that clip, and she was part of a bigger network of other progressives in this area, and I've started connecting with it. And really what we kept seeing is people from the TVPA. TVPA is the Tennessee Valley um, Progressive Progressive Alliance. Yeah. yeah, so it's a long, big word, but it's just about this whole entire area, the North Alabama area, collecting together, talking about the issues that matter to them. And there's a lot of people that have government access. You know, they just, there's a lot of people that have a lot on the stakes because there's people in power that don't want them to have those positions. So there is an uprising and it is very 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 peaceful and loving and from a place that cares about human beings and um i think we need to understand that about alabama is we're going to be a diverse area but we don't need to move away to make it better Most we need definitely. to make it better by being here and everyone not from alabama and needs to help make it better and by more progressive us, people here mm -hmm. you know give give people a platform share their posts Exactly. Please. And this whole Roy Moy fiat, more Roy or I can't even say his name. That's how much Roy of a mess Moore. up he is. Roy <laughs> Moore. And these allegations. I know his. I know the lawyer of one of the accusers, uh, Deason. Her. I know her lawyer, who is Paula Covia. I've known her through other avenues, totally unrelated to this. I didn't even realized she was practicing still until awesome. she said this is my client and this is on behalf of her thing she turned down sean hannity and his stupid show and that made national headlines i'm really proud I of her because she's like no you're just gonna hurt my woman and she's been a, a victim of abuse and we're not going to allow that to continue so on a national scale alabama's being put in the spotlight and um i think it's important that we give each other a voice and a platform to hear out 
you know, the progressives that are trying to do good, like Devin and his friends who are trying to be great, upstanding citizens and represent our community and what boys need to become and women need to aspire to be partnered with, you know, like all these things. And then we have Mo Brooks, who's, I think, on his way out because he's not, he's not willing to represent his constituents as my clip indicated. And I think America's just going in a more progressive route anyways. Mm-hmm. And that's what we need is a... Uh, I wouldn't say Trump is progressive. I would say he's a little outspoken. I guess that would... Or very he's outspoken. Self-serving. And self-serving. So eventually I think we'll get to the point where we have progressive leaders in every state and every city and our own country. It's changing. We have transgender... Um, representation where the bathroom bill was first originated we have everything you know so we we need to people just people that truly believe. understand <laughs> exactly and, people, and make it happen and, and people that truly in. understand being different i'm gonna say something that's a political message brought to you by Devin s keith <laughs> <laughs> it's time to get to work y'all <laughs> <laughs> you can use that Devin. <laughs> it's time to get to work y'all it's time to get to work well we appreciate you listening to this episode of M and Joe Top. You shouldn't get so political. Shouldn't get so political. But we do anyway. But we do anyways. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye.